Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is the recording for MED 220 Professional Procedures, 8DAX. Um, let's, let us shoot for 9 a.m. Uh, on Saturday mornings going forward uh, for our Zoom sessions. Um, uh, and uh, I recall that uh, all students this morning are having some technical difficulties, but that's okay. Um, make sure to uh, watch the videos. So let's go through the overview of this class and what you're responsible for. And it runs the typical gambit of a 10 week course where every, every week is uh, essentially worth 10%. And uh, so um, um, during the weeks, there'll be of course this Zoom session, a task and a discussion or some sort of, uh, and the task will be uh, either, uh, could also be in some form of some sort of homework. Well, the syllabus isn't uh, cooperating with us, but all intents and purposes, the first three weeks will be uh, dealing with this uh, career guide right here, which is um, everything you needed to know about getting a job. And it's a step-by-step -step process that starts from the very beginning and then goes to the end of um, you know, what do you do when you do get the job? Okay, and it covers everything from resume writing and um, uh, job search and, of course, um, um, uh, mock interview. Now, mock interview, we can do that over Zoom or over the phone um, because that is also a requirement around week three as uh, one of your um, uh, one of your grades. So, What's due this week? Well, this week there is a discussion, right? At least 200 words, APA format, right? And what are your strategies for those of you um, are transitioning either from the, and I recall that the current students are transitioning from a um, administrative medical position to a clinical. So that's how, what you should be focused on on your discussion uh, for this week. And both of you, since both of you called me and communicated to me, will uh, receive full credit for uh, being on this um, Zoom meeting, um, but again, due to technical difficulties. So how are, uh, to outline a plan on how are you gonna transition, of course, that will, of course, include your training, right? And, um, and this is for also for other students who are coming from sales or from other backgrounds because this is gonna set you up on how you write your resume. Because even though you're gonna be applying for, of course, um, a clinical position, you have to start analyzing what skill sets do I already have that kind of match to um, you know, the, the clinical aspects. And we're gonna be talking about how you should be thinking about that way, because remember, when you interview for a position, it's not really what you can do. It is what you can do for your employer. You have to kind of match your skill sets to what the employer wants, right? Uh, employer uh, um, being a, a previous hiring manager in a Fortune 500 company. I love saying that, uh, it makes me sound uh, fancy schmancy. But uh, um, at one point I used to have um, 93 managers under my chain of command and a couple thousand people under them. And uh, interviewing, I really don't care if you're a people person or you did um, you know, community service. I wanna know is how are your people skills going to help you uh, do the job that I'm hiring you for? How does your community service or the things that you do in your private life actually enhance the current skill sets that you have for my job. So that's that's what this um, uh, this transition plan uh, should um, should help you start thinking about. Okay. And again, that's due next Friday. And today is the what today? Today is the seventh, so it's due 9 a.m. on the 14th. Um, and also, the, uh, no other task other than to, of course, watch this video and then definitely go through the CDS guide. Now you will see it starts changing after like week three, we start doing laboratory and then 
it'll be a review of MED 140 stuff of like vital signs. And then, uh, oh, there's a midterm exam where you can either come to the campus or um, there's a take home variety of it. And I'm going to change the dates because I just, um, I just downloaded this from my previous um, uh, from my previous uh, classes. Then week six, we're going to talk about EKG. And even if you haven't had EKG before, um, uh, I can I can go over at least the procedure and a little bit on how the procedure and uh, the lead placements. That's the most important part. Um, we're not going to go over pathologies and all the the nuances of reading the EKG, but that is for. Um, uh, welcome, welcome. That is for uh, the week six. That is for just the procedure itself and uh, uh, anatomy and physiology of the heart and um, the conduction system and then uh, lead placement. And of course, NSR, which is uh, normal sinus rhythm, how to identify what's normal. And week seven, we do phlebotomy. We're going to go through the color top tubes in order of draw, and then we're going to practice. And you can see this is a laboratory class. Um, there'll be mandatory two required lab classes where we go through all of these procedures, and I make sure that you're, you're cleared on them and that you're ready to go to externship. Your analysis, again, another review. Now, week nine will be uh, uh, kind of like remediation, and of course, week 10, or if you want to take your exam, uh, you could take uh, the exam uh, week 10. And remember, the dates after like week three, I have to change them. They're all previous dates, but you should be good for week one and week two. And again, the only thing that's due next week is a discussion. Okay. So uh, let's jump right in on uh, uh, what's important uh, for this, uh, for you know this uh, this first this first lecture. Now, if you open up your CDS guide, and that's a career. It stands for Career Development Student Guide or CDS. Uh, when we were in the on the ground classes, we used to um, have these um, on the ground sessions where your um, our uh, director of career services and our current director of career services is Ms. Alexandra Bushrod. Um, uh, she she would come in and she would give you like these little trainings. Um, and it starts, if you look at the table of contents, it starts off like a job search, then resume, then interviewing, then networking, career development. You can see it's like a pathway. And if you look at The very first page, okay, let me make it a little smaller. You can see it follows a pathway. So I believe that those of you, uh, those of you who are in the current class are looking for, of course, a clinical, uh, clinical uh, career. And actually, uh, I recall that there were members of the class who were talking about nursing. So you should be doing research and choosing what specific job? That's why a common question uh, when uh, nurse candidates go to nursing is, one, what kind of nurse do you want to be? Two, why in heaven's name do you want to be a nurse? Or the same thing for medical assistant for any job. Do you know anything about it? How much money are you going to make? What kind of hours will you have? Uh, because you don't want to be like my brother-in-law who's now, he's been a nurse for like four years now. He was like, I didn't know it was like this. And he doesn't like it, right? But, you know, he's already neck deep. He spent a lot of money on his education. But he should have did what? Do the research and know what he was getting into. Now, on the other hand, my daughter, she's only been a nurse a year, a little over a year. She knew exactly what the job entails. And she made her peace with it and accepted it and actually enjoys her job even though she's a newbie and it's her first year because she did the research and she knew she knows how much she's getting paid and she knows um you know uh the cost of being in the profession now um week two um going into week three we're going to be working on your resume and again this 
week's discussion, this first week discussion is uh, kind of like an inventory of skill sets. What kind of skill sets do you have based on your research of, the, of, your, of your dream job? You start gathering up contacts. Here's another thing that my wife did, which got her her last two, three jobs in the medical field. We started networking and we started hanging out with the people who would be giving her a job. Like for, here's a classic example. She had to do an externship, right? And the externship of course is unpaid. Well, she was like most students were like, ah, I don't, I've got kids. I can't be, I can't be doing 20 plus hours a week on a job that's not paying me. So what we did was uh, we joined, a, um, I asked my wife, okay, in a dream, in a dream scenario, who would you like to work for? And she says, oh, Department of Health. So we got into uh, this women's group who uh, had a lot of Department of Health people in it. And we made sure that the women's group knew my wife's skill sets. And one of her skill sets is she's a Zumba instructor. So she used to do Zumba instruction for their parties for free. Well, as we were doing that, guess whose party did we did for free? Apparently the greater DC director of the Department of Health, right? So guess what? My wife got a paid internship. She would have never known about the paid internship if she if we didn't have contacts. It, because you know that saying that uh, it's who you know and it, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, it's, that's partial, par, uh, um, that's part of the equation. Uh, for example, I got this job, my current job, through because I've known Dr. Hamida for years and she gave me the heads up even before this my position was even published so they didn't interview a lot of people they they only interviewed people who were close to Stratford University and I made sure my resume matched up the skill sets that Stratford wanted and made sure that my contacts at Stratford University knew uh, about me and what I could do for the company Four, which is um, connected to contacts. You're networking, okay? And inf informational conversations. Find a mentor. Find somebody, right, who could, who's done what you've done. Um, for example, um, I have a nephew of mine. He wanted to be, uh, he looked up online, like, what's, the, what's the, like, the best job for undergraduates? And it was in data analysis and number crunching. Well, he was like a part math major, so he, and he didn't want to become a math teacher. So you know what? He found somebody uh, who was in that business, took that person to lunch, and then picked their brain, and that person eventually became their mentor, and he eventually worked for their firm because his mentor got, uh, uh, got him in. Another thing, apply. Every time myself and Ms. Bushrod, uh, your director of uh, career services, always talk to students who don't get a job. We ask them, how many places did you apply to? And the answer is always like, oh, a couple. No, I'm talking about dozens. Uh, when I was a medical assistant, uh, competition is fierce in New York City for any medical uh, position. Uh, I apply, I remember this number distinctly. I applied to 60 facilities in a 10 mile radius of my apartment in New York City. I, out of all those, I only got um, three callbacks, two interviews, and then I got a position. So you got to apply and you got to see the broad picture because if you apply only to one or two places, what are the odds of you getting in? But if you apply to a whole bunch of places, what are the odds of you getting in? And I remember uh, it was like, I don't know, it was, it was like a February or March when I graduated from my medical assistant program, uh, I had a job by, uh, by April 1. And I, didn't, and I didn't need career services to help me because I applied to so many places even before I graduated. And I'll show you tricks on your resume on how you make you look like you graduated, but you're still pending. You all, and track the activity. Who called you back? Who didn't call you back, right? Make sure to do a mock interview. You're going to be doing a mock interview with me in a couple of weeks, and we could do it online. We could do it um, via Zoom, because nowadays that's how, how, how it works. And of course, always follow up and say thank you. For example, 
the original position I applied for was Dean here at Stratford University Alexandra campus. I didn't get that position, but since I followed up, they were like, oh, we already interviewed you. How would you like uh, the faculty lead position for health science? Um, and if I didn't follow up, if I didn't say thank you, and then uh, another thing that I did was ask like, oh, why, why didn't I get the position? Well, the position was already filled. And then I asked, why are you interviewing me? Uh, if you knew the position was filled? And he goes, well, because we were looking at you for other things. And if I didn't follow up, I would have never known. And of course, last but not least, you know, don't take the first thing you see, negotiate. Uh, look around, right? Um, try to find the best place for yourself. And of course, get hired. That's the function. So each one of these pages goes through each one of those steps. So for jobs, uh, for job searching, when's the best time to apply, right? When's the best time of the week? And this, and uh, what's, uh, uh, when's the best time uh, of the year? Um, oh, this is debatable, in my opinion, on the best month. There's no real best month, in my opinion. Uh, it, again, you're, you're trying to cast a wide net. There are some uh, facilities that, um, you know, they, uh, they have their budgets at different times. Now, typically, March is a pretty good, decent idea because that's the first quarter. And especially in the first quarter of the year, um, companies are, are usually doing well. So they usually have some money to play with. Um, other months that are, are good are also like the October, November months, because that's when uh, companies are closing their books and um, they're doing last minute hire as well. But every month has their advantages, but according to our Department of Career Services, right, uh, these are the best times, okay? Um, and again, back to that map, follow up, follow up, follow up. You're constantly looking at your emails. You're constantly, constantly looking at your applications, right? Now, this purple squirrel, um, that's a job candidate with precisely the right education experience and the perfect. Now, this, why purple squirrel? Because that person doesn't exist. You're looking for the best possible match and, there's, and it's, not a, it's not a perfect thing, right? So you have you also have to do your research uh, because again um, maybe you've heard this term you're not only inter you you are not only being interviewed you're also interviewing them to see if it's a, a right fit for you. Now regarding online job researches um, we have NACELINK right here which is uh, Stratford University's uh, connection to the uh, HR world, but. Um, uh, these job these job search websites are okay, but they have high volume. And um, again, back to due diligence. Uh, the way you get a job through these um, job searches is is that you're constantly on them. You're kind of, you're 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 constantly um, uh, looking at um, uh, looking at the sites and updating your profile and updating your resume. And I always, uh, I always make the analogy of how job searches are like, kind of like dating, right? Um, it, they, they, it, it's a short period of time where they gotta, they have to get to know, you know, the real you, not the fake you. Um, but that's hard because you're always, because just like dating, you're, you're trying to put your best foot forward and you may not be uh, 110 completely honest. But again, if you are honest with yourself and know your skill sets, and especially know your, know and be honest with your weaknesses and your true strengths, then you try to find jobs and facilities that match, um, you know, your attributes. So one way to do it is this is a nice little thing here. That if we were in class, we would write down what's your, and you got to ask yourself what is your goal, what is your dream job. I actually went through this for both my daughter and my wife and my wife got her the job exactly that, that she wanted uh, for right now, right? Because she described what kind of job and that's how she kind of knew that nursing wasn't for her. And my daughter, that's how she kind of knew 
that's why nursing was for her because she looked at the ideal job. What do you do? Research what kind of companies and what, and what do they do and which skills, okay? And you always, this is also a common question in, um, in interviewing. Where do you see yourself in three to five years? Because a lot of companies, they may hire you as the low person on the totem pole, but they wanna see how you're gonna grow. They wanna see how, uh, if you may be a potential for management track somewhere down the line, right? Don't stay stagnant. Um, when I was a medical assistant, I was a medical assistant for four years. That's three years too long. I wasn't thinking about what's the next thing I should have done. What's the, uh, what's the next step? Now the job tracking thing I did, you could do, um, I kind of did this. I used to have post-its on my wall and uh, I wish I could turn this sideways, right? Where I had, which company, when did I call them? How, how, how did I think it went? And then I put uh, the ones that I thought that I probably could get a, a second call or a call to interview. I put them on a special part of my wall. And then the other part were the, were the other places that eh, didn't look like they were interested in me. But I made sure that what? I'm tracking them, okay? So that you also don't apply to the same place twice or the same facility twice, okay? So that's the research portion, okay? And you could see now that you really should know what you want and where you wanna be uh, even before you start going looking for that job. And it helps you focus on where exactly you wanna go work. So let's now jump into uh, uh, resumes. So what is a resume? Now, typically, uh, if I remember my statistics correctly, uh, and you could look it up, but they used to, uh, they used to quote the statistic, um, e even when I was an undergraduate, that most managers only spend, they spend less than 40 seconds looking at your resume. And you may say, oh, that's not fair. But there, just imagine if I had like, 50 of these things on my desk and I need to fill that position quickly because for every day that the position isn't filled, it's, it's eating up money and it's eating up resources. Like I have to have a temp person where working for me, or um, I have the current staff doing double duty because the position isn't filled. So your resume and your uh, uh, letters of introduction, you know, they should tell a story and they should tell it pretty darn quickly and they, it should be evident. The format also, um, uh, for medical, it's aerial and uh, font size 10 to 12 and 10 is already pushing it. It's already kind of small. So um, make the work experience. We're gonna talk, you don't want the most recent work experience. Actually, I do not agree with this statement here, 10 to 15 years. Um, to me, resume writing, from the uh, various books of resume writing that, I, that I've uh, uh, researched over the years of teaching this class, the average is six years. Don't go further back than that. And also most college transcripts don't go further back um, six years. And when we talk about your work experience, use keywords, use action words. And we're gonna be talking about which action words um, you know, uh, get to the get to the reader quicker because remember, you have forty seconds for the person reading it, and if your format is off, if it, if your resume isn't telling the story quickly, if you're beating around the bush on what your skill sets are, then I'm going to put you in a pile of. I'm not calling that person. Okay, education. Make sure the education matches the minimal requirements for the job. Okay. You have a medical assisting degree, do not go applying for an MD. You will not get it and you will just irritate people. I, mean, I know I'm exaggerating, but again, how many times? Now, if the education is close and not really too required, we're gonna talk about how you can, um, you can uh, slip past uh, um, certain gates uh, regarding education and how you're gonna do that. Skills, awards, and interests, and remember, I don't care if I don't care about the award or the interest or the skill set even if it doesn't match to what I need. A classic example is 
um, you're applying for a clinical position and you keep on talking about all the administrative stuff you do all day. I really wouldn't care less. Or, oh, when I was in sales, I broke all these sales records. What the hell does that have to do with me uh, hiring you as a clinical person? Do you see now where it's a, 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 it's a paradigm switch? You're looking at not what you're good at. You're looking at what does my employer want and what are my skill sets that will match what they need of me? Typically, uh, a lot of people, even professors, even people with MD, PhDs, they always talk about me, 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 look at all my degrees, but I really wouldn't care less. Um, here's a classic example. There was this guy, he had a double doctorate from Harvard and he came to, um, came to Stratford he, because he just moved in the area and he just wanted a part-time teaching gig. Right, he won all these awards and all these other interests in politics and things and things of that nature and all these papers that he published, but he couldn't answer some basic basic questions on how do you deal with a, a student that's not handling handing in their work, uh, how do you investigate uh, um, um, you know poor academic behavior without prying into my student. You can't answer those things to me, then you don't belong at Stratford, and he didn't. Right, and uh, and got hired up by another school. I think it was Devry or something like that. And oh, they goes uh, they fired him pretty darn quick because his skill sets, awards, and interests did not match what the company needed. Right, you could be the best thing, but if it doesn't match what we need, then we don't need you, and you don't belong with us. Make sure you deal with gaps and other uh, issues with your resume. And of course, make sure that it's uh, clean. Cross your T's, dot your I's. Is the format good? Are all the fonts the same, right? How many times I get resumes that the format is just ugly? Even professionals, even people with uh, multiple degrees. I don't like the format of the resume and I find it highly suspect. If you're a teacher and you have typographical errors on your resume, you really shouldn't be a teacher. Um, the, I don't see the final, uh, final touches, you know, I don't see that attention to de detail. Now when describing, and we're going to work on this when we work on resumes next week, when describing what you do, everyone keeps on writing the same thing, switch it up, use some different words. There are certain words that like, let's say, for example, the company wants communicator. You better have skill sets that have these action verbs in it. Let's say they're looking for a manager. Make sure that it has what? These kinds of words. If you're looking for uh, a creative or uh, a technical a job or technical skill set, use these. Okay? So um, it is also the language. How well did the language tell the story of who you are and the most important part of the story, what you can do for the company? Okay, so we look at the, also all resumes aren't created equal. Do not just do the uh, generic one that the first um, template that uh, Microsoft Word kicks out. That's useless, right? You should have a resume that looks like uh, the industry that you are in. For example, the culinary industry is gonna look a certain way and the business industry is gonna look a certain way. So does medical. Um, the rule of thumb is I, uh, when I help out students with resumes, I usually pick uh, nursing. I find a nursing skill set resume and I emulate that format. And you can look that up. Here you go. See the healthcare? Typically written in what? Uh, and of course, these screenshots aren't so good because there's no margins. The margins should be at least at one inch around. And if you look at uh, the healthcare, uh, um, uh, do you see here how everything's concise and everything's in a proper order? And there's a profile and or objective in the front, okay? And then it does chronological order with the most recent up, up top. And again, do not go by, do, do not go past six or seven years. Also, do not add in jobs with skill sets that do not match the 
uh, position that you are applying to. Now, if you have 10 positions you're applying to, you honestly, we're in the world of uh, Microsoft Word and editing, you should have 10 varying versions what, because one for one for each position. Now, I always make this analogy. It's like, have you ever seen that guy in the bar who uses the same pickup line on every woman in the, in the place? What happens? He gets turned down by every woman in the whole entire place because he's using the same resume. He's using the same spiel. He's using the same advertisement. Um, uh, the guys that I've noticed in my years of uh, being in the entertainment industry, also my years in, uh, in a fraternity where it was a highly social environment, the guys who had game were the guys who actually analyzed and custom tailored their discussion to the person of interest. So um, a classic example would be like, um, uh, one of um, um, one of my fraternity brothers, he was he was we called him the pickup artist because he was so good at talking to women, and he uh, goes he would he wouldn't be uh, use up cheesy pickup lines or or be boisterous or he would actually just come up and say hello and then compliment them on either their clothing or and their shoes and he did their research he knew what type of shoes people wear he knew what um, the fashions and he goes oh my god he goes are those, are those jimmy shoes how much did they cost oh girl you look great in that next thing you know she's buying him drinks right and oh like this and and that's how you should also treat um, resumes. Make them like ways to attract uh, not a potential mate, but a potential job. And it has to look the right way. How many times has somebody tried to pick you up and they were not dressed right, right? And we're gonna be talking about uh, how, how to dress and how to look and how to lie. Or they just said the wrong thing. Or maybe they had way too much nervous energy or the exact opposite. Maybe they, uh, they had uh, too much confidence, right? Here's another nursing resume example. Do you see how organized it is? Okay. And then everything's in a line. And you'll also notice that the bullet points, they're not long. They're not in full sentences. They're straight and to the point. Because remember, I only have 40 seconds for, for someone to look at my resume and go, hmm, that's the person I need to call. Hence the term tailored resumes. So like I said earlier, the, the, if you have 10 different facilities, they're gonna have 10 different needs. So you tailor the resume for each need. And the best way to do that is you look at the job description of the facility, of the place that you are applying to. Then you start um, tailoring or modifying these bullet points to start matching it because this is typically how an HR manager or a hiring manager uh, um, looks for a position. We have a little checklist either in our head or actually there's an actual paper checklist and then we start looking down. Does the paper, does the, um, does the applicant have a people skills? Check. Evidence there. Does uh, my applicant have the ev um, education? Check, evidence there. Does the application have some experience uh, even remotely related to what is required of them? Check. So if you have the capability of actually using their own checklist against them, then um, uh, you'll score more points and the odds of you getting the, the position get greatly enhanced. And I'm not a fan of this selected coursework. They can look at your transcript for that. I like taking these, the courses that I've studied and show them how my education matches up to the skill set that you need. Let's say for example, they need somebody who's in communication, like who needs to be a good listener or a good speaker. You could tell them, hey, I have, um, goes, I have training uh, in oral communications and in, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, professional writing. Uh, you can even get certi certificates that match you for that. 
um, a classic story is this. My wife, years ago, again, back to who you know and what they know about you. My wife was teaching a Zumba class and one of the, one of the people who loves her class was a doctor, a local doctor here in the area. And she was talking about how, oh my God, I'm, I'm having a hard time with my manager. She's always has, you know, she's always out and, you know, I, I'm, I'm starting not to trust her. Well, of course, uh, she was in my wife's class. And then my wife says, I'm, I'm studying in healthcare. Why? What are you looking for? And she said, well, I'm looking for this, that, that. And then so she showed her her resume. And then the doctor asked, do you have any management experience? My wife said, no, but I have a certificate in management and HR. Boom. Guess what? She got hired because she had the thing that the doctor wanted. The doctor wanted to hire her, but she had no, no experience as a manager. But she showed how I don't have much experience as a manager, but she goes, I have training, right? And again, back to that uh, transition. When I was 19, I, uh, Marine Corps did not have um, uh, these military uh, transition um, resume building uh, classes. Nowadays they do because it, has, it helps you transition to the military, to the civilian world. And this is the hard thing that many military personnel have issue with. Like in the military, you do really, really great and interesting things. But again, it goes back to how does that translate into the real world? And I, I always used to make the joke when I applied to uh, positions. Well, I, I made the joke once and I saw the look on the woman's face and I never made that joke ever again. Uh, someone asked me like, oh, what does the Marine Corps teach you? And I go, I'm really good at drive-bys and home invasions. Again, those are, those are not skill sets that most people want, but military to civilian, how about the discipline, right? How about um, I'm good with dealing with my chain of command and the needs and the demanding needs of a chain of command. I'm good at taking orders. I'm good at being on time. Uh, um, you know, my unit, I never was late. I never was absent. Those are the things that your employer wants to know. They really wouldn't care less if you went to jump school or whatever. My, I remember my resume when I was, uh, when I was like 19, I put all my military occupational schools on it. That's not going to impress anybody. No one, no one gives a damn. I went to jungle warfare school. What does that have to do with getting a job at target? Nothing. And was it a surprise that I got no jobs? Nope, was not a surprise. But again, 19 year old Nelson, not so smart. 50 something Nelson, he's a little bit better. Now here's a quick checklist you look through here to make sure, this is just a way to make sure that you, you got everything down. But the best really for resume is make sure you tell your story and be concise straight to the point because remember um and i gotta look it up like i but i always quote it 40 40 seconds uh a typical and i totally agree with that when i when i look at resumes i'm like i just gloss over it and i'm looking for keywords and here's a way that you could start building your exercise building your resume if you don't have one now all right what goes, uh, what is a cover letter or a letter of introduction? Now, this letter of introduction, if you look at it, is kind of long, but we can make it a little shorter. But all intents and purposes of the cover letter has three parts. The first part is uh, where'd you get their information and why the rationale, why are you writing it? Now, real quick, the second paragraph should be this is what I did, blah, 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 blah. I believe this is beneficial for your company. And again, matching up skill set to what they need, not what you're good at, what, because, uh, what you are trained to do for their needs. And last but not least, I call it the request, right? It's uh, if I always put something like, if you, it goes, if you, it goes, I would really love to speak to you in person. I believe I can communicate better. Uh, uh, in person regarding all the things that I can do for your company. 
uh, I can be reached at this and this number and this is his email any time of the day or week, uh, day or night. All right. And um, so typically a cover letter is, uh, is, and again, a lot of managers don't even read the cover letter, but make sure that that cover letter has the three parts. And remember our discussions, distinct part, a big, distinct beginning, middle and end. You may not think that we're training you, but we are kind of like Miyagi and Danielson, right? You don't know, you may think you're washing my car, but in actuality, you're developing a skill set. Okay. Um, so again, to reiterate the rationale, why am I writing? Where did I get it? Uh, why should you hire me real quick? And last but not least, um, the follow-up or the request for uh, interview or, or, or phone interview, okay? And you could get, what I do is I get like a, um, a cover letter template from, um, I download it online, you know, try to find a free one and then just modify it. And you could see it's block type lettering. I mean, block type letter means that everything is always on the left margin. And if you do sign it, you always do the handwritten signature underneath sincerely. I've seen it over here, over here. And of course, type your full name and then ENCL, which is any enclosures like your resume or letters of reference. Um, that's another thing too, as well. I always put my references up front so that if they want, I wanna make life easier for them to call me or to call um, uh, um, to call my previous employers and to know that, hey, I'm a good guy. And by the way, if you have somebody's number and name um, as a um, reference, please inform that person. How many times my former students don't do that to me? And uh, some hospital calls me and, and and then I have to lie and say, oh yeah, I know her. When I'm like, uh, I barely know this person. Uh, Morris cover letter samples. Again, here's a reiteration of the parts. How do you know about this position? Uh, well, it goes, uh, what it goes? What are some? Uh, what are what are the really quick quali qualities that I have? Now, when you give reference, your number one and number two should be dead solid, and it can't be somebody who knows you in the personal life. Look for someone who knows you in the professional world, okay? But uh, number one and number two reference should be uh, solid. Uh, the odds of me calling the third one are pretty pretty rare, but heck, I only just call the first one, to be honest with you. Um, or the sometimes I like to mix it up. I, I, I call uh, the second one. All right. That's all we have to go through for this week, because if we we're in the normal class, we'd, we'd actually have a, a, a writing workshop. So next week, we're going to be talking about the interview. And then like uh, beginning of week three, we're going to have an actual mock interview for a grade. Okay, so uh, what to do, of course, read over this stuff and uh, doo -doo, go through, um, uh, go read through uh, this uh, interv uh, interview items. And here's this lovely self-assessment. Remember I said earlier, you should know your skill sets, know who you are. And because it relates to a lot of interview questions like, what is your greatest asset? What is your greatest weakness? All right? And, and again, research typical answers, but don't be corny. Be honest about it. I love when people say, I don't have a weakness. And I'm like, what are you, Superman? Even Superman has a weakness. Or if they say things like, oh, my weakness is, is I work too hard. You know, don't do that. He goes, uh, that's corny and, and it, it's uh, disingenuous. Um, be honest. And actually, if you have a deficiency, always talk about how you're always learning to improve, them, uh, improve upon it. Um, the elevator pitch. Okay, let me go through 
the elevator pitch and then we'll do we'll talk more next week on um uh, um interviewing so what's the elevator pitch many times you might like you know maybe in a seminar or something like that you might bump into somebody that um that has the um capability of you know maybe uh getting you a job okay so what's the elevator pitch when you're making a pitch that means you're trying to um make an advertisement you're trying to sell yourself so again your pitch should be short and here's um right here here's a uh what do you call that here's a sample well who you because you can quickly do it in like 30 seconds who you are uh with your credential what is your objective um and your objective should always be service to the institution in question with skill sets that the institution needs right and also genuinely demonstrate your interest. We haven't hired, there's some, some professors who are really good, but their interest in Stratford University and interest in teaching, it didn't seem genuine, right? Be genuinely interested in the company. Look them up and uh, make, them, make them know that you know who they are. Um, and make sure you know that you have the proper qualifications. Uh, and of course, at the very end, just like your cover letter, have a card ready, have uh, your uh, contact information, have your uh, actual uh, resume ready. I have a habit of bringing my resume wherever I go. It's in, uh, it's in my hard drive, it's also on the cloud. So if ever I need my resume, I can easily run the Kinko's and print it up and give it to this person. Or I could ask them, hey, what's your email? I'll email it to you right now. And I have it on the cloud so I can do what? Email it. Now, you'll see that some of the things I've been talking about, concise, right? Memorable. Now, when we're talking about interviews, we're going to be talking about how you should be thinking of the three things that you want them to remember you about. And remember, those three things should match up to the objectives of, of which they published in their, um, uh, their job order. Be relational, right? Talk about uh, talk about uh, examples where you did stuff as a human being. For example, we didn't hire this one young lady because she couldn't give me examples. Uh, we were interviewing a couple of weeks ago for the administrative assistant and uh, for nursing, and we didn't hire her because every time I asked her, uh, "Can you tell me a, a time in your career where uh, you had a difficult patient or difficult something?" She goes, mm, I can't really remember. Then you can't show relationships. You can't show how you deal with people. Okay. And uh, of course, defining what makes you you. Make sure it's memorable, right? And what makes you interesting? Not only um, um, makes you interesting, how are you interested specifically in our company? Uh, they always, uh, on interviews, I always ask, what do you know about Stratford University? And a lot of people can't tell me. They're like, well, it's a university. It's in Alexandria. Mm, I didn't really look it up. And you're like, these people did not look at our training here. And by the way, I mentioned that I took a $1,000 course um, regarding HR, regarding on how doctors should do resumes and things of that matter. It mirrors this. If I show you the notes that I got from that training, it looks just like this. So I believe that um, um, that uh, Career Services did a wonderful job in, um, what do you call that? In developing this packet, okay? Just like you know you, do you know your employer? Research them, know who they are, how many beds? It goes, uh, why specifically do you think they need you? Because what are their needs? Okay, I'm going to sound like a broken record for the next two weeks uh, about that. All right, so right now we're delving way more into uh, the interview portion of the show, and we're going to do that next week. So that's all for that's our lecture for today. And remember, um, the lecture and the CDS guide, it's fair game for the midterm. Okay, so any questions, comments? Yes. 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 Yes.
If not, let's call it a day. And um, again, I was going pretty fast, so if you want to uh, watch it, I will, uh, I will have it have the recording by noon. Okay. All right. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Same. Have a good day. Bye.